one of the classic dilemmas a quality splitter for old vintage machinery for old table saws so I have a uh, 1973 Powermatic 66 that's my main uh, worker uh, it's got a two horsepower motor and this is my main saw that I use for, for ripping and cutting to, to width and length in various thicknesses I also have a uh, Powermatic 66 set up for, for, with a dado stack for uh, doing all my uh, dados and joinery um, so really a splitter on that one wouldn't mean much um, because you're not really doing through cuts with dado stack uh, but I've always wanted a quality splitter for this now if you know anything about these saws you know that the old guards uh, very rarely are on the saws when you buy them used uh, they're very cumbersome and so they usually got removed here you can see what the original looked like uh, it was connected uh, behind the saw and then also uh, down behind the blade here's the bracket that would connect it behind the saw and then here are the various pieces of the actual blade guard um, so I, I was lucky with this saw that the, the pieces for the guard were all here um, but just again it's so cumbersome in my setup I don't have a spot behind the saw because I've got two saws back to back um, sort of a bi-directional setup here that I, I couldn't really put the original guard on but it, and I looked for a long time for the Powermatic, uh, excuse me, the Beesmeyer uh, pop-up splitter or the removable splitter that they created uh, for the 66, but it's very hard to find. There's not many of them left around. So um, the other day I was going through my Powermatic box of leftover parts. There you can see that classic green. I try to keep everything when I do restorations. And I saw the, the original uh, guard and splitter and I said, huh, what if I just take an angle grinder and cut this piece and then uh, put the kickback poles, the anti-kickback poles back on it. Put a bolt through there and a stop bolt so that they don't, uh, the kickback poles actually stop and create um, something that looks very similar to the Beesmeyer spreader. Sort of a removable splitter um, out of the original. So this is what I come up with. And um, so all I had to do is cut a, a slit in my zero clearance insert. I'm a big fan of just making them out of plywood. And then here's the spot in the back where uh, the splitter can just uh, fit into the original spot. And then uh, tighten down the, the bolt there. Obviously with a, with a wrench, but since my hands are full. And then zero clearance insert goes back in. And then I've got my my splitter. Obviously it's not a riving knife um, and it's not as nice as the ones that are very uh, easily removed but it's just a wrench tightened down. So I'm going to try this out see how it works for a while. I'm pretty psyched to come up with a solution for free and um, it's something that I'm sure you could rig something up for for a lot of these old saws if you've got some sheet metal around that's the right thickness or if you've got the old guard and you don't want to use the whole cumbersome thing but you want to create a splitter at least. So now I've got a splitter and uh, I've got my overhead dust collection shroud that functions as a blade guard as well. So I'm pretty psyched about this setup. We'll see how it works. As I was fine tuning the splitter, I realized that the anti kickback poles were a little bit too long. They actually touched the cast iron tabletop. And so um, I, I re drilled uh, new holes for the bolt and then trimmed off a little material on the top and then also filed away any of the. Uh, the little um, sharp edges. So now I'm going to reinstall here and I'm going to uh, put these anti-kickback poles back on and I've got the bolt and washers and spacer, spacers and so forth and you can see here now they're just going to hang and not quite touch the table but they will catch the material that comes through. So just right. So there you have it. A pretty simple splitter for an old vintage table saw. Hopefully it'll work well.